Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So we've been pretty busy working with on Wanda and making her more, well, more and more <laughs> of a camper van and less and less of a regular white van. And this week we're gonna talk about how we're turning our van into a puffy jacket. Yeah, and how we're gonna let her breathe. What we're gonna do in this episode, we're gonna walk you through our steps on how we install the insulation, mm -hmm. how we install the Max Air fan, and we're also gonna explain why we picked the Max Air and why we picked the Tinsulate as an insulation. So if that's where you're at in your van conversion, great. If that's not yet where we are, you're at, then you can just look forward and, uh, and see what's coming next for you. Or if you're just thinking about potentially you're <laughs> converting your own van, then here's step what? Kind of three. Two, three. Two, three. Yeah. yeah. Of building your own van. Let's get, get started. We are Zach and MP, and for the last year, we have been traveling, living, and working aboard our self converted ProMaster van with our two dogs, Cindy and Jasper. Now, we're off to a new adventure as we recently bought a brand new 170 Sprinter that we will be converting ourselves again. Join us on this new series of episodes as we will walk you through the steps of building your own van conversion in hope to inspire you to live this amazing lifestyle. Why we chose to use a Max Air fan? So the answer is 100% because of our learning experience with the Dometic fan. We have nothing against Dometic, nothing about against their nope. fans. They do work very well, but if you are planning and living in your van through the winter, they don't work well when you leave them open in the rain. We do all the time, and now we have issues with our fan mm -hmm. because they got wet multiple times. So mainly we wanted a Max Air fan because it has a cover, you can leave it running, and also it runs on their own. So you can program them so mm -hmm. they just sense when they should be on. So that's just like, oh. Oh. Also, not only it does that, but it runs on a way less amperage, amperage? Amp hours. Amp hours. So it runs on a lower amp hour than the, than the Dometic does. So that means I don't have to be like, Zach, can I turn the fan on right now? Or is it gonna drain our batteries? <laughs> so. Just those, what, that's, that's three things. So oh, first, yeah. it can be run in rain. That's like major factor. Second, it runs on low amperage, which means it can be run almost all day. It won't drain your battery that much. Third, it has its own control. So it'll run whenever it should be running. So if it senses that the temperature in the van is rising, it'll, the van will turn on. So that is like a smart fan, basically. So good. And I think there's a fourth one is we got the fancy one that comes with a remote. <laughs> So that means we're in bed, feeling a bit hot, feeling a bit cold, turn it off, turn it on, whatever you need to, turn it a notch, turn it two notch, do whatever you want. Whatever you want, you can do it from your bed. So Max Air it is, it is more expensive, but honestly, I think it's such an important piece of the van that it's worth spending a little bit more. It's not even that much more expensive. No, it's just like this, that little bit extra. So yeah, do that's it. why we got a Max Air on. And we're not sponsored. They don't owe us anything. We just say that because we think you guys should know that. Yeah. What you need is jigsaw. Drill, two drill bits, one big, one small. Buttle tape, always. Caulking gun <laughs> and lap sealant. Your plastic and your tape, two by two for your frame. The very first step is to figure out where you want to put it in the van. So we put it up into the front, it's near our kitchen, so it's a nice easy pull up during the kitchen and it pulls across the whole van. Step number two is to make your template for the hole. You're going to take a piece of cardboard and you're going to use the fan itself to make your square. It's about 14 by 14 inches, but you should always use the fan itself to be sure. Number, step number three is it's time to make your frame. So what is a frame? It is the two by two wood. You're going to create a literally a square with, I use the miter saw for everything is nice and easy. And this is gonna allow your fan to be screwed to your van. Next step, step number four, is you are going to go and take your template and you're gonna draw out the shape on the roof. So we're working from the top of the van at this point to make sure we're always working down. So once you've drawn out 
where your fan's going to go on the roof, it is time to tape and prep your workspace. Just like the windows, lots of tape. Use your plastic, prevent those shavings from going everywhere. On the inside, also tape it up. We create a kind of like a, a catch underneath so that shavings don't go everywhere. It just saves you so much time. So the next step is the fun one. You got to start drilling through your van. Then once you have your template, you're going to take your drill, drill a pilot hole, drilling down. And what you're going to do is you're going to get big enough that you can put your jigsaw through it and it's time to start to cut. So we are going to take the jigsaw and we're just going to cut out nice and slow along the line that we just did. After you cut your hole, you're going to dry fit your fan. Make sure it's nice and square and smooth to put in. If you have any burrs or it's a little bit too tight, you can take your angle grinder and, and just kind of angle it out. Make sure it's nice and smooth. The next step after you grind the edges is to paint the edges. We don't, we want to prevent rust. It is super important that every time you put a hole in your van, paint the edges. Once you've done, once the edges are all dry, what you're going to do is you're going to place your fan into the hole and you're going to start drilling out all the screw hole placements with your drill bit. You want to make sure you pre-drill through the metal so the screws can go in nice and smooth to your frame. Once, once you've pre-drilled your holes, take the fan out and you're going to lay down your buttle tape along the whole edge of the hole. Once you have the buttle tape in, take your fan, drop it into the hole and you're going to come from the bottom and you're going to put your frame on. We glued ours in for it's nice and sturdy and you're going to come up to the roof and it's time to start drilling. So the next step is to take your drill, working your way along, sucking all the screws down and making sure the fan is nice and solid. Once you put the screws in, don't suck them down all the way, bring them kind of almost all the way and then do the final couple triggers with the, with the drill at the very end. The last step after you've screwed all the screws in is to apply your sealant. Take your lap sealant with a caulking gun and just work around all the edges and make sure all the screws are covered. What we did is we took those little metal clips, we pulled them up just slightly so when this guy get placed down at the top, we can line all the holes up. So I think one of the biggest questions I got asked during the last build by like every person walking by, I felt like was, how are you insulating your van? Well, the last time we felt we, we did it, we did it with a XPS foam. It's like a hard, big sheets of foam. It was pretty good, we think. We're pretty happy with it, but this time we're stepping it up we're using Thinsulate. So why did we choose Thinsulate? So there's a few reasons. Uh, first of all, the foam was kind of easy to do, but it was actually pretty hard because it's not flexible. Mm -hmm. So you can't get into all the cracks. You can get into the complex shape of what a van is like. So Thinsulate, one of the advantages is that you can really push it, squish it. It's fabric, basically. It's like fluffy yeah. fabric. So you can get into the cracks. You can almost get in any parts of your van. So you're going to insulate your van a little bit more uniformly. Yes, we are using spray foam in some of the places mm -hmm. we can't access, but that's really the only place we can't put to insulate. So very easy to install. Also, it's not messy. Like foam, I remember when we did it, it was like everywhere. There was pieces of foam everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's And it's pretty wasteful. Tintillate, you're, you're gonna end up almost not wasting because all your leftovers, you can shove it in little cracks and stuff. So, And probably one of the biggest reasons we chose Tintillate was the R value. It's about four and a half R per inch, which is super efficient. It's hydrophobic, yeah. just like foam is. So that means if there was any humidity in the van, it would still work because the fiber doesn't absorb the water. What you'll need on top of having your tinselate ready to go, measuring tape, some type of big ruler, scissors, tape, spray glue, marker, spray foam. Also, another thing that will really save your knee because you're gonna be on your knees cutting this insulation, knee pads, all kinds of knee pads, anything that's gonna protect your knee basically. The first step you need to do when you start with your insulation is you need to first make sure that you estimate the right amount that you'll need for your van. So for a 170 Sprinter, um, it's 70 linear meter. It comes in a big roll and there is a few calculators online to find what amount you need. We did use one of the calculators to find it for yourself, but 70 linear meter is what you need for a 170 sprinter or is recommended. So after you estimated how much to insulate you need, the first step you'll need to do is start cutting your pieces. So you can lay out the roll and what I ended up doing is for all the bottom panel, it's all the same height all across the whole van. So I figured out how tall they needed to be. So this is about the height. And then what I did is I would go and measure between each of the support and then cut that piece of the panel out. And then I would go put it in. 
and then move on through the van that way. This is actually a piece that might benefit from being glued in because as you can tell it, it doesn't quite it's not shoved enough there's nothing holding it that much so take the, the spray glue do a quick spray and then put it in and that will ensure that once we put a wall on it it won't fall out or it won't be moving or it won't like do this because that would basically create a whole open area that's not insulated um, and then you move through the van like that so some of them will require a little bit more shoving or navigating example once you're here you're going to need to use like your fingers to shove this long skinny piece across. But again, this is one of the advantages of Tinsulate is you can really like get into all those cracks. And that's essentially how you install Tinsulate. It's super easy. Then you will, if you have a sprinter like ours, you will not be able to put Tinsulate in any of the support here. Um, what we are using is the great stuff, which is the spray foam spray foam that expands and basically it comes with a little nozzle and you can really shoot it from all the little holes and then it will fill this whole uninsulatable rib with something insulatable insulatable <laughs> um one thing we found is i don't know if any of you have ever worked with this stuff but sometimes it gets pretty runny so i would recommend that once you spray it in you actually tape it so you let it expand in because in gravity, it makes it want to drip out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something about insulation and how to install a fan. Hopefully this was useful or some tips maybe will help you as you get through it or if, you're, if it's coming in your near future. Yep. Um, comment below and let us know what insulation you are using in your van or what you're planning on mm -hmm. using. We're curious to see what everyone thinks of and, and why they're choosing different types of insulation. So. Um, we we went through, we did our research and we decided Tinsley was going to work for us. Mm -hmm. That being said, that's not what we have in Rodi. Um, so we're curious. And also, what type of fan do you use? So what type of fan do you have? Uh, do you or have a fan? planning on using? Do you have a fan? Do you have two fans or you have one fan? Uh, we're really curious on, to hear what you have in your van or what you're planning on putting. Um, so let us know. Comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Subscribe because right now we're on track. With our videos, but <laughs> like we said, we're very busy right now and um, we may not be able to release exactly on the day we say we will. So if you want to have a notification to hear when our next video is up, please subscribe because otherwise we don't know who you are. So we can't tell you when our video is up. <laughs> Easy like that. See you next time. Bye. Bye.